are these people? June is Pride Month, typically in many cities across the country and around the world, especially through the summer. Uh, there gonna be, there's going to be a lot of Pride events. You will probably have, if not, if you're in a major city, especially having a Pride event. Yeah. Um, so shout out to all of our LGBTQ plus listeners and followers. We appreciate you guys, you know, especially this month. Uh, Reef and I actually had talked about doing a Pride related story. You know, we talked about Uganda uh, and you know, the issues regarding the gay community there with JB last year, but I think that was a little bit for Pride, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Um, and shout out to Do Dissonance. I think they reported on this story too. I think they might have referred to the article that I'm going to read from, but I saw that they were talking about this and I checked on Google and sure enough, this article popped up. So I was Sorry, like, his oh, we, here, here's our Pride story. <laughs> Um, so, but it relates to Gaza, uh, and Israel and how they're being somewhat hypocritical, uh, during pride in, in, in what's going on regarding their genocide. So, as I said, this article is from the Guardian where Emma Graham Harrison, that's such a British name if I ever heard one, yeah. uh, <laughs> said, um, uh, I well, I should talk even I have a yeah, not yeah, to say my hyphenated name is similar to that. But I have a hyphenated name, kind of like Colin that. Reddick's uh, part of the third. Something, <laughs> uh, you know. So she writes, "No pride in occupation, queer Palestinians on pink washing in Gaza conflict." What is Israel pink presents washing? itself? What I've never heard. We'll that get term. there. Okay. You will get there. It, it, she will explain what that is. Um, Understood. Israel ex presents itself as an LGBT haven in the region, but for Palestinians, it offers neither refuge nor solidarity. So okay. what does she mean by that? So Emma writes, When Daoud, a veteran queer activist, recently walked past rainbow flags hung for Pride Month in the old port city of Jaffa, an historical center of Palestinian culture, he was overcome by a wave of revulsion. The most famous symbol of LGBTQ liberation has been so co-opted by the Israeli state that to a gay Palestinian like him, it now serves only as a reminder of the horror of Foden, just 60 miles south. Mm. Last November, Israel's government posted two images from Gaza on its social media account. One shows Israeli soldier Yoav Atzmoni in battle fatigues in front of buildings reduced to rubble by Israeli airstrikes. He holds a rainbow flag with a hand scrawn message in the name of love. What? So, so this yeah, is huh. the picture here. Gross. Um, and then in the second, he posts behind, poses behind a tank, grinning as he displays an Israeli flag with rainbow borders. The first ever pride flag raids in Gaza. The caption for both images reads, Jesus Christ. Like, yeah, disgusting. <laughs> it is disgusting. Um, at the time, Israeli attacks had killed more than 10,000 Palestinians in Gaza, including more than 4,000 children, according to Gazian health ministry figures. The toll has now risen to over 37,000, and more than a million people are on the brink of famine. I saw the disgusting use of pride flags in Gaza, said Daoud, a Palestinian citizen of Israel whose name has been changed. He asked for anonymity because Palestinians have faced arrest and persecution for expressing solidarity with civilians in Gaza and criticizing the war. Now, in this period when terrible death looms over all of us, I can't see the pride flag any other way. It really turned my stomach seeing them. It was revolting, he added. Mm -hmm. Dalit's reaction is shared by many queer people around the world, said Philip Ayub, professor of international relations at University College London, who researches the intersection of politics and LGBTQ plus rights. That cognitive disconnect of seeing what else is in the image, rubble that was people's homes, then seeing the flag be being displayed in a cel celebratory way. It is a massive violation to people who have fought for their rights under this flag. Disgusting! 
those images from Gaza are a part of a long running international campaign that critics, critics call pinkwashing mm. because they say it aims to bolster the Israeli state by linking it with queerness, presenting it as an exp explicit counterpart to a Palestinian identity depicted as exclusively and violently homophobic. Yeah. It exploits political support for LGBT plus rights to further an Israeli ultra naturalistic political agenda and delegitimize and legitimize the oppression of Palestinians, said Saeed Ashan, chair of the Department of Peace and Conflict Studies at Swarthmore College and author of Clear Palestine, Palestine and the Empire of Critique. Mm. This messaging was not was driven not by genuine enthusiasm for LGBT plus rights from a government that includes a self-proclaimed fascist homophobe as finance minister, he said, but was deployed strategically for political ends. Well, you don't hear about that guy. No. <laughs> the Israeli state has different audiences, as Chan said. If it is addressing LGBTQ-friendly domestic audiences in Israel or globally, then it whips out this pinkwashing discourse trying to portray Israel as a gay haven. For homophobic audiences, including at home and Christian Zionists abroad, it presents a homophobic discourse about religious conservatism and adherence to family values and revulsion towards queerness. Yep. When Mada Makros, a Palestinian citizen of Israel who is a human rights lawyer and award-winning activist, heard that Tel Aviv planned to mark pride this year, she was stunned. Is there no sense of humanity to realize that there are people being bombed every day in Gaza by your own country, and you're calling for pride and equal rights for queer people? Who cares at the moment if you have equal rights as queers? I honestly don't care because if we don't have equal rights as humans, it doesn't matter. Agreed. Moko said she was taken aback nearly two decades to 2006. That year, there was an Israeli attack on Gaza, and as a head of a Palestinian queer activist group, she campaigned for a boycott of the World Pride Parade hosted by Jerusalem Open House. What wrong timing, what bad timing. Not only then, but now, she said. In fact, it's always the wrong time and it's always the wrong topic because there's no pride in occupation, whether it is 2006 or now. The scale of death and destruction in Gaza has made the struggle for queer rights less urgent for many LGBTQ plus Palestinians. For me now, the Palestinian flag should be raised, not the pride flag, Daoud said. So this kind of proves, because we hear online that, oh, or you might hear, oh, there are no Palestinian, queer Palestinians in Gaza. Or like, if for all the people who are queer, who are like protesting for Palestine, then people are like, oh, why don't you go there? And do whatever you want. And you brought a clip. Well, you've we've shown this clip, but it bears showing again, you know, just this idea of like, yes, there are queer Palestinians, contrary to what people might say. Um, they may not necessarily live in Gaza, but they do exist in yeah, in Israel. Um and you can argue it is a double sword for them in terms of them being criticized for, I think, mostly in this case for being Palestinian, but then also gay, which to an Israeli might be just a uh, turn off completely because, yeah, you know, mostly they're looking at them as Palestinians, so they're looked at well, as. I think those people are probably citizen. more worried about dying to Israeli bombs than being found kissing their boyfriend yes. by their family. Like I'm, I'm here to right. tell you, you know. So, and I'm betting their family has a lot more to worry about too. I'm just guessing. So, right. Ugh. Yeah, more so than being queer, but yes. Yeah. Anyway, um, Israel's track record on LGBT, LGBTQ plus rights includes barring discrimination on grounds of sexual orientation, recognizing foreign same sex marriage, although it has not been legalized there. And I'm allowing sorry, same sex couples to adopt. Well, yeah, I'm, like this is something I've mentioned this. I know other people have mentioned this. Like, you cannot get married in Israel mm. if you're gay. So, yeah. so 
does it not what a as haven. progressive. Yeah. Right. Not as progressive as they claim to be. You uh-huh. know. Um that being said, Israel ranks better than most neighbors on the equal dex LGBT equal equality index in 50th place globally. Palestinian is ranked 146 with consensual same-sex sexual acts legal in the West Bank, but not in Gaza. Mm. But the idea that Israel serves as a regional haven for the queer community feels particularly cruel and hypocritical, activists and academics said, at a time when the LGBTQ plus population of Gaza has no more refuge from Israel bombs than any other Palestinians. Mm, There you go. There is no pink door in the wall for queer Palestinians to leave Gaza and make a life in Israel, said Ayu from UCL. The Israeli rhetoric just makes it even harder for LGBTQ Palestinians because it reinforces the idea that queerness exists nowhere else. It erases the fact that there are Palestinian activists, queer Palestinians. Yep. Um, even for the majority in the LGBTQ plus community, Israel's track record on equal rights is outpaced by its official propaganda. Palestine is a patriarchal society and homophobic, but so is Israel. There are more queer rights in Israel than other Middle Eastern countries, but they're still limited and it's not a major success story, Ayub said. There is a long, well-documented record of the Israeli security services exploiting the sexuality of LGBTQ plus Palestinians in the occupied West Bank and Gaza with devastating and sometimes fatal results. During my training course in preparation for my service in this assigned role, we actually learned to memorize and filter different words for gay in Arabic, a member of Israel's intelligent corps testified a decade ago. Okay. If you're homosexual and know someone who, is, who knows a wanted person and we need to know about it, Israel will make your life miserable. Last year, a Palestinian from Nablus was publicly executed. He had confessed collaboration with Israelis, Israel's domestic intelligence agency, Shin Bet, saying they used a video of him having sex with another man to blackmail him into informing. Mm. LGBTQ plus Palestinians suffer widespread discrimination and abuse in both public and in family settings in occupied territories, human rights groups say. But those who smuggle themselves across the separation wall into Israel from the occupied territories in search of a more queer-friendly environment and often find instead racist hostility, bureaucratic red tape, and a state of long-term vulnerability. Queer Palestinians seeking asylum in Israel are regularly barred from health care and denied resident permits. They struggle to access shelter and therefore face abuse and exploitation, a life of hell, documented in a Plus 972 magazine report. Mm. Long before the current war, Dayud realized he had little in common with most queer Israeli Jews. He recalls bringing transgender Palestinians from the occupied West Bank to the beach. Most have spent their lives barely an hour's drive away from the Mediterranean, but were barred from traveling to its shores by Israeli restrictions. Some, seeing the sea for the first time, were in tears. I thought, what do I have in common with gays whose entire struggle is to be able to have their partners from Germany or Spain come to live with them there when I'm not even allowed to bring my relative for a visit from the occupied territories, he said. It's not even the same universe. The war in Gaza has only sharpened for him an understanding that even if queer Palestinians did not face such radically different problems, there is little room for a joint struggle with Israeli Jews because most value their privilege in a Jewish state over their shared queerness. Many Jewish counterparts in Israel have anchored their claim for equality in their willingness to serve a state and die in its military campaigns, largely directed against Palestinians, he added. In effect, they are saying, we're willing to partake in the oppression of Palestinians so the state won't oppress us, he said. They got their rights on the backs of Palestinians. Mm. Uh, Yaji, I'm sorry, I'm going to put yeah, Yali, Yali, I guess that's how you see it, say it. Mm. A transgender Jewish woman who, on the day of Tel Aviv Pride, joined an anti-war demonstration under the rally cry, no blood washing in our name. 
shares this critique of Israel's mainstream LGBT plus community. Many people in the queer community are drawn to the idea of gaining acceptance by being naturally useful and submissive to the state. Yali said, not because we are human beings, but because we are of service. That vision of queer national identity was prominent at Tel Aviv's Pride this month. The usual parade was canceled for a muted seafront concert that included calls for the release of hostages and celebration of queer Israelis serving in the military, but there was no mention of Palestinian civilians killed in Gaza. Stories shared at the event, including a transgendered woman's decision not to change her official gender identity so she could still serve in the reserves and fight in Gaza. Morcos is baffled by Israelis who describe their country as a democratic haven for the LGBTQ plus community in a hostile region, particularly when real tolerance rarely extends beyond the limits of Tel Aviv, saying, how can you boast of your democracy for queers that then oppresses millions of Palestinians? Oh, so any thoughts? So yeah, that's the end of the article, but any thoughts? Not really. I mean, it seems about par for the course for them, you know? Like, it's, yeah, this is similar to me of, uh, you know, politicians here in the U.S. where they attach a label to themselves, but then continue to, you know, vote for bloodshed and, uh, you know, uh, I don't know how that's any different, you know? Right. This is just on kind of a bigger yeah, scale. It, yeah, it's interesting in the article that they gave up a good point because... If because they mentioned Christian Zionists and we talked about Christian Zionists several weeks ago, if anything, they should have a problem with how Israel defines themselves as queer friendly. If many of these Christian Zionists have oppositions against yeah. gay people in general, they should not necessarily be. The issue is, is what Christian Zionism actually is there, right? They don't necessarily care about what's happening in the region. They only wish that right. Israel own it so that, you know, Jesus can come back. That's that's it. Right. Which, you know, that's the only reason they care is because they want the world mm. to end. So, right. uh, you know, it's whatever, but I feel you. So, yeah. But speaking of that, um, as I was prepping, I thought about this because I responded to this person maybe like a, a few months ago. Right. Sometimes, this is the thing with Twitter, people are pushed on my feed for no reason. I don't know why. Uh, but this guy was pushed in my feed for some reason. Um, I think there was this back in the fall. And I happened to find it because in talking about this, it reminded me of this guy. I believe yeah. he's like, he's gay, white, gay, but Trump supporter, if I remember correctly. So, okay. Hitting it on all cylinders, folks. But anyway, uh, he tweeted This is why I won't ever support the radicalized Islamists in Gaza. So, notice what he says there. Yeah. Um, These people would gleefully murder me and my husband, not just for being gay, but for being from the West. This has nothing to do with the laws each has on the books in any given country. This is ideological. The vast majority of Islam is fundamentally divergent from the rest of the Arab Abrahamic, Arab, Abrahamic faiths. It is controlling, oppressive, and violent. I will continue to point out the absolute idiocy of Western leftist gay people that show for Palestine when those same Palestinians will kill them with a smile on their face. They'll do it to any Westerner, regardless of if you're gay or not. Uh huh. So if then you don't why believe me. Make the distinction. It, right. If you don't believe me, book a flight. I think some uh, people fucking did. We're going to get to that. Right. Um, right. He, and for some reason, because I had time that yeah. day, um, I responded to him. And actually, like, I think this is what I had. Yeah, back in October. Um, so I tweeted, you're right that this conflict has ideological roots. This whole thing stems from Zionism. This has nothing to do with religion. Again, you are demonstrating lack of understanding as I have spoken to a few Israelis who are against what is happening in Israel. So, oh, uh, so this was October 8th. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's also he doesn't understand the core principle of why they might hate Westerners. Like it has nothing to right. do with ideologically. It, it it has we've been feeding them weapons and bloodshed for the last I don't know how long, like since the Crusades right. practically. You know, right. so they might yeah, feel so just to give the, the, maybe leaving the fuck alone. Yeah, so how just about to that? Give this guy some context. This is the day after October seventh that he was just shooting shit. You right. know, in terms of Hamas or whatever. Hamas. So he felt like he had a right to say something. Yeah. Now, there's actually is a gay Palestinian that I do know of on Twitter. His name mm. is Rami. He's based in Spain. Um, so shout out to him. I hope he's okay that I use this from him. Yeah. But he repeat but he responded too, uh, in terms of this. So he said Except you're wrong about all of this, and ignorance clearly continues to be the most prized Western value. Hope you heal. Much love, a queer Palestinian. Um, P.S. I had 44 members of my family murdered in this genocide. You don't care about queer issues or queer Palestinians if you can't care about me. You're just being racist and Islamophobic. Bombing an entire people isn't, isn't how you help them advance queer issues. That will never make you the moral or progressive one. I would almost, I would almost rather you actually be that self-centered that is justifiable for you to slaughter people en masse for gay rights, but I know it's not even that. You just have hate in your heart for Palestinians because you assume they hate you first. I'm sorry you're so brainwashed and misled. Love is out there. Hashtag free Palestine. And there's a little bit more. PPS. Fun fact. There have been more hate crimes against gays in America mm-hmm. than in Palestine. Yeah. Like, so, Ty, I believe your name is, talk to any black trans person of color here yeah. about gay rights and see how, let's see what they say to you. You have the privilege of a white guy Right, being operate operating in that stance that yeah you might be gay but you're all white so you also you do have that sh- shadow of privilege covering your ass. Shit, how many but hate crimes in Israel? A, Would they even right. call it a hate crime? Like right, you know. Ugh. But anyway, Rami continues. I hope it doesn't come as a shock to learn that queer and gay people aren't really safe anywhere yet, but leveraging those issues to champion a genocide just makes you trash and bar of a bigger problem, not part of any solution. So, yep. again, shout out to Rami. Yeah, you can follow him on Twitter. Yeah, like I thought. I mean, we don't hear from any Palestinians, especially queer ones, so I'm very happy to, to know of a queer Palestinian, at least online that was able to kind of give a rebuke regarding this dumbass's uh, response to the day <laughs> well, on the day after October 7th. He, he asked people, well, take a flight there. So some people did. Um, <laughs> right. You know, and we played this before, but I think it's fitting to play again. If you've missed it, if you're new here and haven't seen this, I think I got this from Jay Buffon who shared it. So shout out. Uh-huh. But... Yeah, I'll, I'll let them speak for themselves. You shouldn't be supporting Palestinians if you're LGBTQ. Seriously, they'll murder you. Don't believe me? Go there. See how they treat you. Okay, then. Let's go. Mission. Gather and label supplies, assemble a team, arrive and distribute aid to as many Palestinian families as possible while serving as openly LGBTQ. Here's how it went. You are... But Rain, you're an outsider, so of course it was different for you. Well, that wasn't what y'all claimed. You said Palestinians would murder me. But here, in case you aren't satisfied, our team was largely made up of local LGBTQ plus people and their allies, and they all survived. Oh, and if that's still not good enough because they were providing aid, we found Gazan Palestinian LGBTQ people at this stop, this one, this one, this one, this one, and many more. They all had grown up to adulthood while living within Gaza, Palestine. This rumor is a vicious bit of propaganda meant to dehumanize the victims of one of the deadliest months of bombardment to any territory on this planet in decades, and it's a lie. Now, do LGBTQ people in Gaza Palestine still need liberation? Yes. Do they have their full rights? No. Is it safe for them to be super open? Most of the times, no. But their struggle isn't unique to Palestinian culture. It's a struggle shared by most LGBTQ people on the planet in different but very adjacent ways. I've experienced similar treatment in Ukraine, Poland, the USA, Colombia, Mexico, Turkey, and more. LGBTQ plus liberation is a lifetime fight, one we're not unfamiliar with, but 
let me be clear, regardless of the progress of that fight, this is never an excuse to turn our backs on the suffering and liberation of others. Gazan Palestinian LGBTQ plus people and their allies will continue to push for their rights over time, but right now the priority is to push to have a life at all, a home at all, a land at all. Our focus should be on that call for humanitarian aid to every beating heart. Yeah. Any, any questions? Um, and I just saw this some. I just saw something uh, as I was watching this again. I think, it, you know, even with Ty's um, critique, you know, he made the assumption that Palestinians equates to Muslim Islam, which not always the case is bad. Yeah, which are we know Christian Palestinians. Not all there Palestinians are... are Muslim. There are um or arab you for say you know like there are christian palestinians that are jewish palestinians and you know not all of them may necessarily subscribe you know like and some if they are they could be gay but or what or queer or whatever but it, but i think it's the association that people generally make is not even so much palestinian but islam is the issue and Islam tends to have this bad rap of being, you know, a terrorist type religion. And listen, like my sister, my youngest sister is Muslim. And I'll tell you, like, she is definitely not a terrorist at all. Like, I will say that, you know, but I think that's kind of that association of not so much Palestinians per se, but the idea of the religion that many people here believe that they subscribe to is a problem which again is not the case you know mm -hmm. there are christian palestinians there are jewish palestinians in addition to or maybe some, many some may not describe to religion at all but it's the fact that they're palestinian in of itself is the problem not yeah. for the religion and look and i'll say this for someone who has been to the middle east you know is there um Yes, there is this part of that world where it is kind of predominantly Muslim, and yes, they can be more conservative in ways that, you know, especially as far as sex or whatever, that you need, they're more conservative in that way. But mm -hmm. again, I went there and, as a Black person, and and we talked about the hospitality, you know, about with within that culture generally like i was treated extremely well in that culture i think again it's the idea of you're going into a culture where that is unique to you i always go in especially if it's a new place i always go in with the idea of respecting that culture but more importantly it's the idea of like let me learn about you and your culture and and again like they would be very open to have those conversations like like with you so I'm sure if it was an issue regarding, you know, LGBTQ issues, I'm sure we may not have been able to have an agreement, but I would have, I'm sure I wouldn't have been able to have a discussion about that at least. So yeah. it's not to say that that all people have this feeling of gay bad. It's no, it's the idea of, yeah, there's going to be some cultural slash religious things that they need to be talking to, but you can also make the argument that people here that are very conservative and oh, do not very think, much so. think of gay bad and parts of they Africa, also need to talk parts of to South too. America, so, parts of India, right? Parts of Saudi right, Arabia, it's who like supposedly idea, is our ally. Right, but parts it's of the idea of like but it's, but it's the idea that people think that we're just so far ahead. Yeah, in LGBTQ rights here, we sure, but there's still like a lot of discrimination and still a lot of, you know, for the gay rights, for the gay community to, that they need liberation from here as well. That, you know, again, especially if you're a person of color or trans, people are still fighting for. So again, this guy is speaking from the privilege of being white, you know, that you he can use that as a cover in terms of not really fully knowing or understanding or i would honestly argue not caring about the issues those issues as it applies to people of color who are also queer so yeah 
Um, so yeah, it's a more nuanced issue than I think people think it is. But it's the idea of, you know, like the idea of people having the right to exist regardless of who they are. I think that is at the cusp. I think, honestly, that's the point of pride. It's that the idea of like, you have a right to exist in this world, regardless of who you are. So whether or not you're gay, straight, whatever. And in this case, if you happen to be Palestinian or Israeli, you have a right to exist. And you do not have that right to exclude others on the context of them being, or you considering them an other or less than you. So and I get what these activists are saying. Palestinian, you know, feel free to have this conversation so that they don't have easy ammo against you as well. You know, I feel like that can be worked right. out pretty pretty easy. Um, right. But... You should have pride to be who you are, you are, regardless, and not even talking about gender or sexual preference, but like just the idea of, you know, in this case, being able to be a Palestinian or for me here, being able to be black or you being able to be, you know, white Southern or whatever, like whatever, like you have that right to be, just be like, mm -hmm. that's the point of pride is the idea of fighting for people who, you know, you can make the argument like as far as sexual preference or gender identity or whatever, not feeling, you know, that, feeling out of place or not feeling accepted. And that's something I think that's the point of these pride events. So the idea that you're trying to exclude people slash murdering people on the basis of who they are kind of goes against the idea of pride, which is what these activists are saying. You can't acknowledge you being an Israeli and you having a pride event, and yet you're willingly wanting to kill people different from you on the fact that they're Palestinian. You know, that's makes no sense. Yeah. But well but anyway, <clears throat> shout out to, you know, all the queer Palestinian people in the world who are trying to rep their rights as Palestinians in addition to being queer. Um so you know, so let us know in the chat or in the comments how you feel about this story. Uh, if you want to support us uh, via donation, feel free to scan the QR code or uh, check out the link that you see at the bottom of your screen uh, and you're able to give out to us financially there. Um, you know, stories like these are one of the reasons why we are demonetized uh, mm -hmm. from YouTube. So we would really appreciate if you like, share, and subscribe uh, like our live stream or our clips to your friends and family, maybe even this clip, you know, just to, you know, share to people within the gay community who are very much for liberation for, for whoever it is, including Palestinians. Uh, and be sure to uh, make a comment. Uh, we're trying to get up to 2K. Right now we're six, literally six people away from that at the time of this recording. So please help us that we're going to help us get over that hump uh, so we can continue to grow and reach out to more people who, uh, who would like to hear us. And thanks for watching. We appreciate you guys. Yeah.